This is an NBC Sports presentation. Ripplings, Bruce Put your game face on and follow NBC Sports. To the SWAC football finals. Tigers are undefeated in SWAC play. And today, Eugene leads his troops against Arkansas Pine Bluff as the G-Men stay on target for their fourth straight conference title. The Tigers and Golden Lions are coming up next on NBC. It's a party in Pine Bluff. The Golden Lions are celebrating their last home game of the season and doing so in style because for the first time since 1969, Rambling's Tigers are in town. Tigers and Golden Lions just minutes away. Well, hi, everybody. Along with Sam Shade, I'm Barry Milligan. Great to have you with us. Now, this is a game, of course, on paper that Grambling should win. But Sam, Doug Williams told us very quickly, they don't play it or coach it on paper. Well, Barry Gramlin comes to this ball game tonight as a three-time defending SWAC champions. And this is a game that Arkansas Pine Bluff, the Golden Lions, have been looking forward to this game all season. This is the first time in 34 years that they've had Gramlin come to Pine Bluff. That's right. Let's talk about now our players to watch. First four, Gramlin. Jermon Douglas, the All-American wide receiver, has missed two weeks. He's back tonight. Bad news for the Lions. Barry, you're talking about an awesome receiver. This guy, Tremaine, Tremaine Douglas, last, last year he had three touchdowns against this Arkansas Pine Bluff team. So he's going to be pumped up tonight and ready to go and broke Jerry Rice's single season record a year ago. Cedric Bowen from Pine Bluff, a little scat back, but that's not the only way he can hurt you. Cedric Bowen, you talk about a guy, Mr. Excitement. This guy, he can do it all. He is leading the swag and total yardage from offense and on special teams. You watch here on this kick return, making all kind of, all kind of guys miss right here. Cedric Bowen, he's a great player. Burned Alcorn in the season opener. That went for 102 yards. Stay with us from Pine Bluff. The Golden Lions would like nothing better than to knock off the Tigers. We'll see if they can do it when we come back. I joined the Navy because I had a plan. I wanted to work for myself. The Navy taught me the discipline I needed to achieve that goal. It gave me the strength, body, and mind. And the knowledge to get ahead. It was the building block for my success. Today, I own my own business. The Navy gave me more than just a strong foundation. It gave me the courage I needed to find the person in me. Navy, accelerate your life. For the short, for the tall, for the big, for the small, for the day trippers, for the sunbathers, for the surfers, for the divers, for the ball players, for the fans, for those who speak up, for those who stand out, for the singers, for the original, for the responsible, for the kissers, for the committed, for those who love you, for those who love you not, for those who love you a lot, for those who love you a lot, for the hot days, for the starry nights, for the endless days of summer, for all of us, for everyone. Access to higher education at historically black colleges and universities has been the key to success for many African Americans. Now access to technology is the key to successful programs that transition students from the classroom to the boardroom and beyond. NAFIO, the National Association for Equal Opportunity in Higher Education and Gateway, a leading provider of personalized technology solutions, are partnering to increase access to and ownership of technology at historically black colleges and universities. The Gateway NAFIO Alliance offers several benefits to NAFIO member institutions. Special pricing on Gateway products and services, a rebate program on product purchases made by students, staff, faculty, and alumni, a percentage of computer sales fund NAFIO students initiatives training at gateway facilities to take advantage of gateway nafio discounts and to support hbcus call click or come in today and we are back at golden lion stadium pine bluff and grambling just about set to kick it up at first sam shade what about doug williams arrow post style keys to victory well barry doug talked about controlling the tempo and that's going to be big in this game, especially playing on the road. And they also want to win the turnover battle. That's going to be a plus for these guys. Also, they have to play solid in the special teams game, especially against Bowen, who's a great returner. 
Lee Hardman, the head coach for Arkansas Pine Bluff. What about him? Well, Hardman talked about putting pressure on Eugene. They've got to get to Eugene. They've got to sack him. They've got to get in his face because this guy can make all kinds of throws. Also, they have to be able to run the football, and they have to minimize penalties and turnovers. That's what's killed this Arkansas Pine Bluff team in the past. Brian Morgan, the junior kicker for Grambling, set. And we are underway. Cedric Brown carried Washington deep to receive. That is Brown, the very dangerous return man, coming near sideline, and he is pinned up and driven back. Gets out just to the 16-yard line before he is taken down by Charles Woods. So that's where the Golden Lions will take over first and 10. I'll tell you, I'll tell you Barry, that was, a, that was a good job by Gramley containing Bowen early, you know, showing Bowen that they're going to be around him. Starting quarterback. Antonio Lovelady, 6'2 junior, who does not have the best numbers, and this guy has been maybe the hardest luck quarterback in the swag. He has suffered through a torn ACL in 2001, a broken ankle last year in week eight against Jackson State. But Coach Hardman says he's my guy. He thinks he has the most experience. They're coming out winging, looking downfield, overthrown, and out of the reach of Brian Thomas Miller. Let's look at our Geico starting lineups first for Pine Bluff along that offensive line. Things have changed a lot. Rod Green, not normally a starter in there, and Khalif Candy also. They're getting more size along that offensive line tonight. They want to do everything they can to protect Antonio Lovelady. And that's, that's, what, that's what Coach Hartman talked about. He talked about getting more size on that offensive line, you know, especially going against Graham, a team that has some pretty good size up front on defense. Backs in the eye, and the handoff to Billy Moody. He battles forward for a couple of yards before he is knocked down by Michael Dagry, who is back in the starting lineup tonight. Along that defensive line, Kador, Leonard Patton, an awful good one, John Petty, Tremendous linebacker as well leads the way for Grambling State. They'll call it just a gain of one, so third down and nine, and third and long is not a situation that Pine Bluff wants to be in. Not at all. No, Coach Harmon, he talked about that. He talked about getting positive yardage on first and second down, and you know this is going to hurt these guys third and nine right here. Three wide outs. Moody coming out of the backfield. The blitz is on. Lovelady running for his life, gets the pass away and complete. That will be that short pass is complete to number 37 of first down Johnson. yardage. That pass complete in the flats to number 37, James Johnson, but that is short of the first down yardage. You watch right here, Barry. These guys from Grammar, they're really getting after them. Both guys coming off the end, getting love later to get out of the pocket, and he has to get rid of that ball before he Even wants to be right number here. 39, so Pine Johnson. Bluff will have to kick it away. Andrew Bergeron lets it go from the 10 yard line. A line drive kick that hits at the 48 and goes out of bounds. The Grambling will have excellent field position at their own 43 yard line as Bruce Eugene. Now you give this guy an open field like this, and well, that's the kind of things he can do to you. You look at the numbers right here on this guy, Eugene Barry. This guy, he already has over 2,000 yards, uh, total yards on the year, 18 touchdowns, only nine interceptions, and he throws the ball a lot. So nine interceptions is not a lot of interceptions for a guy that throws over 50 passes a game like Eugene does. 55 passes the last time we saw him here on NBC in a victory against Alabama A&M, and he only played about one series into the fourth quarter. Four wide outs out of the shotgun right off the bat. Eugene, far side of the field. It is complete, streaking down the sidelines. Moses Harris, the six-foot junior, is the number one receiver in the SWAC only because Jermone Douglas hasn't played enough games to qualify. Barry, that just tells you how many weapons. That tells you how many weapons this Grambling team has, especially at the receiver spot. They, they can go nine deep at the receiver spot, and all these kids can play. Offensive line has only allowed eight sacks all year. Henry Tolbert gets the start tonight. Reuben Mays at the fullback position, but those guys don't get a whole lot of carries. This team likes to throw it all over the place, and the coaches describe it just that way. Well, Barry, when you got a coach like Doug Wiggins, a former quarterback himself, you, you expect that. I mean, when you come to Grambling, you come down here, and if you're a receiver, you're going to get a lot of balls thrown to you. 
Eugene works from under center. Good protection downfield, and he's going to flip this one out of bounds as he was flushed out of the pocket. And that will bring up a second and ten. That was great coverage right there by the Golden Lion secondary right there. That, that play right there, Eugene had no place to go with the ball right there, and he did the smart thing. He threw the ball out of bounds, and I think that's what Coach wants. This is a Pine Bluff defense ranked number three in the SWAC in total defense, and this record really does not indicate the talent on this Pine Bluff team, but, boy, some key penalties, and more importantly, turnovers have killed Pine Bluff this year. This is a dangerous football team on second and ten. They're going to run it right up the middle. And gaining excellent yardage is Henry Talbert, the 5'11 sophomore. 213 yards coming into the game, but more importantly, averaging seven and a half yards per carry. Barry, this is a great call right here by Coach Williams right here. Pine Bluff is thinking they're going to pass right there. He runs the draw. That's why that play opens up like that because you got the outside line, you got the outside defensive ends. Troutman, especially, he's a guy who's going to get after Eugene tonight for Arkansas Pine Bluff, and that's something that you want to do to get these guys off balance. To the 29 yard line and a first down, Grambling on the move just two minutes into this game. And Mr. Douglas. Yep, quickly flags fly there, and you know, you have to expect that a little bit after a couple of weeks out of the lineup. Exactly. Uh, Douglas, uh, this is a guy, Barry, he's coming off arthroscopic knee surgery, and to come back in, what, two, three weeks? Yep. That, that, that's, that's phenomenal. But this guy, if he hadn't missed those two ball games, he would definitely be leading the swag in receptions. Great First receiver down, for Grammar. Had a slight torn meniscus, and he is back, and again, that means trouble. But after the march off, it's 1st and 15 now from the 34 handoff to Talbert looking for running he can't find much coming up for the stop and that was an excellent play by Aaron Bridges yeah, that, that's well, Haywood Small I beg your pardon Haywood Small from his linebacker position and Haywood Small he, he, Haywood Small is one of these small linebackers but he's going to make a lot of plays for Arkansas Pine Bluff and Gramlin, that, that is not typical of Gramlin. They don't run the ball that much. Uh, they're trying to get Arkansas Pine Bluff to honor the run in this ball game early. On second and 15, Eugene flushed out of the pocket again, but gets it away and complete to Chris Day, who makes a little inside move, battling for yardage. Gets ahead to about the 22-yard line. Chris Day. And, and, and Barry, Chris Day, he's another one of the receivers. So many weapons. You've got Douglas. You've got uh, you, you watch right here. You watch Eugene sit back in the pocket, and this is the thing Eugene can do. He can buy his receivers time in the pocket. Chris Day was covered on that play, but Eugene bought him enough time to get open. Give him 12 on the play. Grambling the number one team in the SWAC in third down conversions going at a 49% clip. Third and three this time from the 22-yard line. Day in motion, and again, flags fly, and that is going to be another procedure penalty against the G-men. We have some movement in the backfield right there. The running back, uh, he got a little anxious right there. I think the motion, and, and Gramlin, that's what Gramlin does. Gramlin, they spread you out. They move guys around. They send guys in motion, and sometimes that, you're trying to hurt the defense, but sometimes that stuff can come back to hurt you like it did right there. I think you can argue the only thing that can stop Grambling may be Grambling. And I think that's it. You know, talking to Coach Williams, you know, Coach Williams, he, he knows he has a lot of talent on this team. And, you know, he tries to be humble about it, but they've got a great ball club. Third down and eight. That is Jermone Douglas in motion to the far side of the field, and Eugene had to get rid of it before he wanted to. That's exactly what Coach Hartman was telling us about. Put pressure on him, and Courtney McLemore did just that. On that play right there, that was strip. This play right here, Eugene, he just doesn't have enough time. He's got a timing rod out there, and that's going to be a blitz right there by the outside linebacker. And that's what Arkansas Pine Bluff has to do. They've got to get pressure on Eugene. If they have to send an extra, extra linebacker into the blitz, they've got to do that because that's the only way that they're going to get to Eugene. Brian Morgan, four out of seven this year on field goal attempts, will attempt one from 45 yards, and it is blocked. So a big play, the first big play of the game comes from that Pine Bluff special teams. And I tell you, talking to Coach Williams, that's one of Coach Williams' keys in this ball game. He talked about the special teams. He talked about the kicking game. He felt like that was going to be an important part of this ball game. And right now, Arkansas Pine Bluffs gets field position right here. You watch right here. You watch the inside. The guy coming off the corner does an excellent job right there of getting inside, laying out. 
And that's the way you teach it right there. Barry. That is a beautiful play. Just an awesome block right there. That, that is exactly the way you draw it up. And kind of ironic, isn't it? Special teams last week made mistakes, cost Pine, Pine Bluff a victory for the first time in 11 years on homecoming. And they're trying to get one back tonight. Love Lady out of the shotgun, over the middle, and it's complete. The number 84, Ronnie Hayes, the 6'2 junior, out across the 40-yard line to the 44. And Hayes, he, he's a big target right there, uh, right in front of Love Lady. And that, those are the kind of passes they want to complete against Bramlin. They want to get inside, catch passes right across the middle, and make things happen after the catch. Sixth catch of the year for Hayes, and that West Coast style would certainly work very well for Love Lady, number one. Their high confidence passes, high percentage passes. And number two, you shorten this game. Keep that clock running. Yeah, exactly, Barry. Just like running, running the ball. Keep that grambling offense off the field. Four wideouts in the set this time. Once again, Love Lady out of the shotgun. Big pressure coming up. Oh, boy. Right up the middle, David Hicks, the sophomore linebacker. And now we see flags fly. I don't think Love Lady was out of the pocket there, so we may get a grounding call. I, I think that's what it's going to be, Barry. Intentional grounding. On the offense, the quarterback was not outside five yards of the pocket. Now, if I could only predict next week's lotto numbers. Okay, Barry, you watch the replay right here. You watch Love Lady right here, and he's not out of the pocket whatsoever. And, but he has to get rid of that football right there. Sometimes you got to eat it, but, uh, you know, he makes a bad decision on that play, Barry. Well, David Hicks, just one of three linebackers, the starters there, Hicks, Tim Wilson, John Petty, all these guys, two sophomores and a junior that there. Also down five. Third down. And these guys are very athletic, as George McCollum telling us, our referee, that that is a loss of down penalty as well. So that is yardage plus loss of down, and that'll bring up a third and 12. Well, Barry, those are Grambling linebackers. Those guys are so athletic and speedy. You can put those guys up there and bless them, and they're going to get to the quarterback. They, they've got some guys on the bench also, some linebackers. Kenneth Petway is a guy who he's going to come, he's going to be in this ball game. He's going to make some plays for Grambling also. That will be a penalty against Pine Bluff as there was a receiver not set. And the pass incomplete anyway. Adelpris Johnson went in motion and was not set before the snap of the ball. So an illegal motion penalty will be called against the Golden Lions. That should be declined. Illegal shift on the offense. Two men in motion. Penalty declined. Fourth down. Barry, Coach Harbin, he has to be very upset about that because talking to him and talking about practice this week, and that's what, that, that is what's killed this Arkansas Pine Bluff team the past couple of games. They've had mistakes. They lost last week's ball, ball game 7-6 to six mm. because of penalties, because of just costly mistakes that they made, turnovers in the ball game, and you know, that's something they worked on this week, and I, I know he's upset about that. Texas Southern knocked off the Golden Lions 7-6, as Sam mentioned, on a missed 29-yard field goal. On the defense, 12th man left the field. Substitution penalty goes against the G-men, so they'll mark off five yards, and now Pine Bluff will punt from its own 41. we have seen a lot of mistakes early on in this ball game, Barry, and I think that has a lot to do with the excitement surrounding this ball game, having Gramlin come, come to Pine Bluff for the first time in 34 years. Bergeron with a me mediocre 35 and a half yard average will offset lazy spiral Jermaine Mills downfield. He won't have a chance as that takes a grambling bounce. And the G-Man will have it at their own 29 yard line, first and 10 when we come back to Pine Club.
It is a magnificent night in Pine Bluff, Arkansas with Sam Shea. Barry Milligan here with you at gorgeous Golden Lion Stadium as the G-Men of Grambling take over first and 10 from their own 30-yard line for their second possession. Talk about G-Men, Barry. These guys, they are definitely the real G-Men. Bruce Eugene right here on the, on the center. Big time numbers looks to rewrite the Grambling record books and he is complete on the far side of the field and on the run Henry Talbert out of the backfield across midfield and into Pine Bluff territory before he's finally dragged down at the 47. I'm so impressed with this Grambling offense watching these guys on film during the week and watching these guys tonight. You watch Eugene, Eugene right here, sits back in the pocket. He knows where he's going with this ball all the way, finds his back right out of the back seal. And look at this guy after the catch making a bunch of guys miss. Just a great throw and catch by Eugene and a good run after the play. Wow. The 19th catch of the year for the tailback, Henry Talbert, good for 23 yards. First and 10 G-men with four wideouts in the set. They hand it off. Big hole up the middle for Ab Kwan. This is a guy that Doug Williams says has made so much progress coming in, averaging 5.6 yards per carry. He had the first two touchdown game of the year for a grambling running back, and that's really saying something as much as these guys pass it. That is huge right there, but you see that big hole right there that grambling. The offensive line does a great job of opening things up for the running game. Another first down. They go right back to Quant. He gets a hole outside to the perimeter. Great seal block by the big right tackle, Andre Bennett. That is another grambling first down. This kid, this kid Abe Quant right here. Coach Williams talked about this kid all day yesterday, just how excited he was about it. You watch him right here as he gets the football, and you see him run for daylight right here. He makes a guy miss right here, and watch the leg drive at the end of the play right here, just driving, just driving for extra yardage. What an excellent run by this kid. He left Terrell Hammond standing in his track, 17 yards. Quan again reverses his field, and this time he is bottled up, nowhere to go. Johnny Randall up there helping out as he will lose yardage. I'll tell you what, I thought Grambling would come back with a pass right there because Arkansas Pine Bluff, they had everybody think and run on that play right there. The defense coordinator for Pine Bluff said, look, we're about to stop this run. This is not going to happen to us tonight. Marty After the play Stewart. was over, personal foul on the defense. Oh, boy. Automatic first down, half the distance to the goal. Well, D, D coordinator Marty Stewart won't like that either. Not at all. Coach Hartman, like he talked about, the mistakes, the penalties have really killed this ball club. And right there, they had to run, they had him bottled up, contained, nowhere to run. That would have been a loss on the play right there. But as it is, they're first and goal inside, inside the 10-yard line. Inside the seven yard line, let's see if we can pick it up. There is Randall coming in late, has Quan yep. around the head, and he, he, give, he gives him a little extra right there, and, and, and that's not called for right there. Uh, Johnny Randall, you know, he makes the play, just get back up and go to the huddle there. Quan once again on the carry, Randall again with the tackle. That 6 2 senior, awfully active right here. What Mr. Randall says, look, you guys are not going to run this ball in my house. You know, he makes a play on that play before and come back, and he makes another play in the running game. So excellent play by Randall. Senior out of Dallas brings up second and goal. Might have lost a half yard or so. The ball spotted at the eight. Four wide receiver set. One of the old linemen, it appeared, came out of his stance. Yeah, somebody moved early right there. We have an illegal snap on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Replay second down. Barry, on that play right there, that Gremlin offensive lineman, you, you, you watch number 60, actually the center, he's going to move a little bit early because he yeah. feels that he feels the blitz coming from Arkansas Pine Bluff. Pine Bluff had all their guys on the outside playing man-to-man -man on that play, and they were sending the house. They were coming after Mr. Eugene on that play. Well, that's Lance Wright, who has been the steady leader of that offensive line, though, all year long. But G-Men going the wrong way on third down. No, oh, that is dropped. A touchdown for Tramon Douglas dropped. And that is not like Tramon Douglas. Tramon Douglas had three touchdowns against the same Arkansas Pine Bluff team last year. And that's not like him, but he's coming off an injury. He's a little rusty. And you watch Eugene right here in the pocket. He sits in there and he takes that shot. But Eugene, he's a 260-pound quarterback, so he can sit in there and he can take that shot. But great throw by Eugene. Excellent throw. Yeah, Doug knows that's one, obviously, that got away. Bruce Eugene had crazy numbers against Pine Bluff last year. 
23 for 38, 374, and seven touchdowns. Seven. Oh. Tied the school record. And seven we get touchdowns. more movement. Jonathan Banks this time. The left tackle moves. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Replay third. We will replay third down, but five yards farther back. So what started as first and goal from the seven is now third and goal from the 18. Well, Barry, I'll tell you what. The only bad thing about this for Arkansas Pine Bluff is that it gives Gramlin a little bit more room down in his red zone to make something happen. And I, I tell you what, I, I guess Doug's probably saying, look, we're going to go. We're going to take another shot at the end zone right here. Eugene under pressure, flushed again over the middle, caught, touchdown. Well, Douglas made up for it. The first score of the night, he dropped a sure ball, and that one thrown into what was pretty good coverage. That was, that, that was good coverage right there on that play. The defender for Arkansas Pine Bluff, he's in excellent shape, but he doesn't make the play. And one of the reasons he doesn't, he doesn't make the play is because of Bruce Eugene. Bruce Eugene does a great job of moving around and buying those receivers time to get open and make plays. And he's so strong, he can throw back against his momentum and still get a lot on it, and Morgan's point after is good. With 7.16 to go in the first quarter, Grambling strikes first. Barry, Eugene, he looks awfully good tonight. You know, just watching this kid, you watch Eugene right here, sitting back here in the pocket. He feels the rush from the outside. The defensive end's doing a good job getting upfield. And he, you see the side arm throw out. This kid, he can make all the throws. Excellent quarterback. A matter of fact, Barry, He's chasing one of Doug Williams' records tonight. He needs 17 receptions. Coming into this ballgame, he yep. needed 17 receptions to tie Doug Williams for the most pass completions in Grambling's history. And they beat Tyrone Walker, one of the best DBs in the league. Hey, put your game face on. Follow NBC Sports all the way to the SWAC football finals. East will meet West in the 2003 Conference Championship game. That's coming up December 13th in Birmingham. Go to NBCNetwork.com, then click on the SWAC conference logo for more information. All right. Six play, 70-yard drive, two minutes and 36 seconds ticked off the clock, culminating with that 18-yard touchdown pass. These Grambling Tigers. Well, Barry, these Grambling Tigers, I'll tell you what, on offense, they've got all kind of weapons. You see Mr. Douglas, you see the two running backs. The receiving core is excellent. Arkansas Pine Bluff, they have their work cut off for them on defense tonight. Cedric Bowen at the goal line, drops it, picks it up, and he's got a lane up the middle across the 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Morgan's got to beat him. He's across midfield to the 50. And he's finally tackled inside the 40-yard line, tracked down by number 81, Chris Day. Cedric Bowman, Mr. Excitement. You're talking about Mr. Excitement. He does something right here that he doesn't do. He drops the ball on the ground, but he picks it up, Barrett. And you're talking about making something happen. You watch this kid. Excellent moves. Watch the kicker. The kicker doesn't have a chance right there. He doesn't have a chance. We have a sideline warning. Dave does a good job of just getting going on left. the ground. That's the second warning. 61 yards on the return. He averages 31 and a half. That's number two in the league. Great field position. We'll call it the 40-yard line officially as Pine Bluff. Tries to get the tying touchdown here with 7.03 to go in the first quarter. Barry coming into this ball game, we talked about special teams. It's going to be a big part of this game, and Bowen shows us why. Love Lady will operate from the shotgun. His pass is complete to the far side of the field. Excellent coverage by Travis Massey, but not before Kerry Washington comes up with his 22nd catch of the year. And on that play right there, it looks like Lovelady, he took a hit to the hand. But you see Cedric Bowen, and he's going to come in on offense, Barry. He's going to come in on offense. He's going to play running back. He leads the entire swag in all-purpose yardage, the entire conference. And he's talking about some of those grambling guys. There are some players, but this kid Bowen, he can, he can play, Barry, I tell you. Second and six, or six yards, rather, on the completion. Second and four from the 34 love lady once again will operate from the shotgun the blitz is on timing pattern going downfield incomplete that is excellent coverage intended for brian thomas miller that is great coverage by octavius bond octavius bond this is a kid you're talking about a guy who can play bear he had an interception last week and he also had a big interception against the same arkansas pine bluff team last week you watch the coverage right here. He is step for step for, with the receiver for Arkansas Pine Bluff, and that's the way you draw it up, Barry. Preseason, 
all-conference performer, Octavius Bond, a 6'1 senior. So that will bring up another big third down situation, four yards to go. And these, these Grambling defensive backs, the cornerbacks, they're out there playing man-to-man -man coverage a lot because Doug Williams felt like coming into this ball game that he had to commit a lot of guys to stop the run. So you're going to see eight people up in the box for this Grambling State defense because they have to stop the run against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Love Lady out of the shotgun again, but flags fly. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, replay the down. So that will bring up a third and nine for Lee Hardman's team. And once again, we are so glad you're with us from Golden Lion Stadium in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. With Sam Shade, I'm Barry Milligan. These Golden Lions trying to knock off Grambling. Will it beat Grambling or Southern from the West in that SWAG championship game? It will probably come down to the last game of the regular season before the Golden Lions. It's third and nine. Oh, the rush is on. And that ball is thrown away. They will say he did get out of the pocket as Leonard Patton, the big 6'4 junior, had all-out pressure on Lovelady. I'll tell you what. They are, they are really yeah, getting after this Arkansas Pine Bluff team. On right the here. corner, the ball never crossed the line of screamers. Lost it down. And it's going to be intentional yep. grounding again, Barry. Late flag. We didn't see it all the way on the far side of the field, right in front of the grambling bench there. They ruled that Lovelady indeed was not out of the pocket. So they will mark off the infraction, and that will bring up a fourth down. I think Doug might have gotten the officials' ears right there on that play. You saw Doug Williams talking to the officials on that sideline, you know, trying to get that flag thrown, and he got it thrown out there. Coach Williams will do that early and often. Yeah, he really gives the, gives the officials a hard time, I tell you. Jermaine Mills deep to receive Bergeron's punt. That takes a Pine Bluff bounce inside the 10. That will be an excellent bounce and roll for Pine Bluff down to the six yard line. The eighth punt of the year for Bergeron nailed inside the 20 and the Tigers will take over leading seven nothing when we come back. Imagine what I can do. Well, the last time Doug Williams' offense had the ball, the G-men drove for a score, but, Sam, it wasn't in this conventional style for the Tigers. I'll tell you what, they kept going back and back, but you watch the good running on this series for, for Gremlin, and this is kind of offbeat for Gremlin. They don't run the ball that much, but they've got some excellent running backs in that backfield. Ab Quan, a couple of big runs, and then Jermone Douglas finished things off with an 18-yard touchdown reception, and... Tiger's going to try to run it again, and that is Quan from deep inside Grambling territory. May have picked up a yard, and that will be all. As that Pine Bluff defense again, number three in the league in total defense. And they do an excellent job against the run, this group does. And I think that Doug 
coming into this ball game. He wants to try to establish his running game against his Palm Bluff team just to kind of see where they are as an offensive unit. Actually, Quan lost a yard this time. Eugene out of the shotgun with four wideouts, and that goes far side of the field, and that is complete to Moses Harris. And you just can't give these receivers that much of a cushion. Moses Harris, we hadn't called his name a lot tonight, but we will, Barry. He makes a lot of plays for Grambling, and he's a guy, he's leading the swag in total yards at total yards after the catch. He catches the ball, and he makes things happen, Barry. 27 catches coming in. He had seven for 111 last week alone. Yeah, he averages 86.2 yards per game. First, first average. First down, handoff to Quan, and he is corralled after a gain of a yard. Mark him out to the 32, second and nine. Barry, looks like Arkansas Pine Bluff is starting to commit more defenders to the running game, and that's why they're able to stop the run. But on the other hand, they're playing man-to-man -man coverage right now in that secondary, and I don't know how long they can hold up against these great Grambling receivers. Big Willie Seals in there. 6'3", 347, clogging up the running lane. Second and nine, out of the shotgun. They fake, come near sideline. The pass is complete to Douglas. He makes a move or two, as he will always do. And he gets it out to the 38-yard line, but it'll bring up a third down situation. Very think about Jermaine Douglas. He's a big receiver, so when he catches the ball, he's going to make things happen after the play. When you swing the ball out to him like that, it's just like putting it in his hands early, almost like he's a running back. He's 6'1", 205, very strong receiver. He can really make it happen, Barry. Caught 92 passes last year, 1,704 yards, breaking Jerry Rice's 18-year-old SWAC record. He is the only SWAC receiver in history to surpass 1,700 yards. There he is again, and he's got blockers in front of him. He's across midfield, and he is tripped up, and it's only because he is tripped up by Brandon Sweeney that he is not in the end zone again. Barry, that play right there. That's just one of those quick quick screens right here. You watch Eugene drop, drops back, and he gets the ball to Douglas quick so that Douglas can get the ball in his hands and make something happen. I mean, right here, he doesn't even get tackled. He's got two big offensive linemen out in front of him, and he loses his footing, and I know he has to be upset about that. That's big Jonathan Banks downfield. 6'8", 360 pounds, having a breakout season along that offensive line. That completion good for 16 yards and a first down at the 47. Out of the shotgun, Eugene fakes the out on the go, and that is just over overthrown. Chris Day had an opening at the 14-yard line, but the pass just overthrown. I'll tell you what, what they did on that play right there, Gramlin has been setting that play up from the beginning. They've been throwing that little quick pass out there to those receivers, throwing those quick passes, and right there, the receiver goes up, he gives a little fake like he's going to turn around, and he keeps going. The cornerback doesn't have a chance on that play. A second down and 10. You see Eugene right there. You look at the numbers on Eugene. 7 of 11 for tonight, 116 yards already in the first quarter. So he only needs 10 more completions. Make it 9 to tie Doug Williams. That's complete to Abquan out of the backfield. He's at the 20, 15, and makes an unbelievable move at the 10, 5. Oh, it gets to the 2 before he is finally dragged down. Are you kidding me? They can't stop that kid. There, we're seeing why Doug Williams couldn't Eugene stop talking about this kid, Ab Corn. You watch right here, you watch Eugene. And he knows where he's going all the way. He's going to Ab Corn. You see Corn catch this ball and look at him after the catch. Right here, he's giving the defenders all kind of trouble trying to get him down. Breaks one tackle, two tackles. Right here, almost gets in the end zone. He is an exciting player for Gramlin. Tyrone Walker could not drag him down. Finally, Terrell Smith did on first and goal. Oh, that is a stuff. And he was met by a host of calls oh. on that play right there. What a stop by the, the guys from Arkansas. Five Dwight Whitfield. Oh, look how Eugene's spreading the ball around right here. Oh. Very unbelievable. Look at all the guys who have caught passes yep. for this Gramlin team coming into the night. You see right here you've got seven players, and all of them have 100 yards or more. So he's really spreading the ball out, and all these guys have touchdowns. So everybody's happy. I almost didn't have enough boxes on my scoring chart for all the wide receivers who have made contributions. And again, Pine Bluff stuffing the run. And again, it is Whitfield breaking through. And that will be another loss of yardage for Abquan. 
Well, I'll tell you what, Arkansas Pine Bluff, they're really playing to run tough right now. They're saying if, if you guys are going to beat us, you're going to beat us through there. You're not going to run the ball down our throats tonight. You're going to have to pass it. And, you know, Gramlin, they're playing a little chess right here, trying to catch Arkansas Pine Bluff off balance, you know, trying to run the ball down here. But we know they definitely want to pass the ball. So they have lost three yards on two running plays and the Golden Lions are going to take a timeout right now. And with that, we will remind you that NBC Network News is the urban voice for news and information that impacts the African-American community. Get the facts and a comprehensive analysis of issues facing our world. NBC Network News with Al Bracey and Gordon Graham, weeknights at 7. Very right here. Got a timeout right here. Arkansas Pine Bluff, they need to keep Gramlin out of the end zone right here. This is an important play right here. You got third down, third and five. They've got to stop. Well, third and goal. They've got to, yeah. they've got to keep them out of the end zone right here, Barry. I'm, I'm interested to see what call these guys are going to make. I think, that go, I, I think they have to get out to Eugene. They've got to pressure Eugene. You can't let him sit back there with his feet. He's a big kid, but great feet. I mean, he really can, he can make things happen we don't, at the quarterback position. Pine Bluff has been such a great closing team, but they've gotten themselves into such big early holes. This team gets stronger as the game goes along, but they just can't get down 14 nothing this early. They definitely can't, Barry. It's, it's going to be tough for them to come back down, down 14. Five wide outs in the set. That is Corey Brownfield in motion. Quarterback draw, Eugene. Wants the goal line, won't get it. He picked up two yards, and that is it before being dragged down by Haywood Small, that outside linebacker. And this is a guy, a great story. Haywood Small had some real conflicts early on in his uh, career here at Pine Bluff with head coach Lee Hardman. But uh, sometimes you got to figure out that the coach has the final say. Well, I tell you what, Coach Harbin almost had this guy ready to pack his bags and get out of here. You know, he was like, it was my way or the highway. 20-yard field goal for Grambling. The kick is up, and it is good for Brian Morgan. That is the fifth field goal of the year in eight attempts. So I guess something of a moral victory for that Pine Bluff defense. They hold Grambling to three. Barry, that's what I was thinking exactly right there. We talked about keeping them out of the end zone. And that's a confidence builder. Although they give up the three points, that's, that builds confidence. That shows you can keep this Grambling team out of the end zone because they've been scoring so many points against teams that come into this ball game. Defense was the key to victory for these guys. They've got to play excellent defense and get after Eugene. Well, no secret that you're seeing Grambling often here on NBC because the Tigers are very prominent on the top ten. Look at that. Southern and Grambling, the two undefeated teams in the SWAC West, the top two teams in our NBC BCSP top ten poll. And Barry, we had that Southern team last, last week. And also, looking forward, down the road, you're going to see Southern versus Grambling. That's going to be an exciting game also, Barry. Our top ten poll brought to you by Imer and Fardam Pharmaceuticals, the official pain reliever of the SWAC. Imerin is the brand you can trust. So once again, Pine Bluff will receive, and once again, it is Bowen from the two-yard line. They fake the handoff. He's across the 20. What an exciting kid this is, but this time he's corralled at the 23-yard line. Mr. Bowen, every time he gets the ball in his hands, Barry, I'm up here, I'm shaking. I'm like, what's he going to do next? <laughs> He's got all kind of excitement. You're talking about quickness, agility. He is something. He's an excellent player for these guys. And oh. he's going to line up in the backfield right here also, Barry. 11 plays on the Grambling Drive, 89 yards, consuming 4 minutes, 52 seconds, culminating in the Brian Morgan 20-yard field goal as the Tigers now lead it 10-0 with under a minute to go in the first. Love Lady will direct the offense again from the shotgun from the Pine Bluff 23-yard line on the screen far side. That is complete. And that was a busted coverage right there it by, was. by the Grambling guys. They had two defenders blitzing on that left side, and that's why they had a guy free in Love Lady's face. But 
So one of those guys has to pick up that guy to the backfield. You can't have two guys blitzing and a running back just coming out of the backfield free. Well, this is a very good running team, Pine Bluff. That is the third string tailback, Calvin Thomas, that just made his eighth reception of the year, getting the Golden Lions all the way out to the 37-yard line, a gain of 14 on the play. And that's one of the strengths of this Arkansas Pine Bluff team is the running game. They've got their three deep at the running back position. they got Cedric Bourne, they got Billy Moody, and Calvin Thomas. Thomas, who we saw catch the pass out of the backfield. Well, two men in motion right there, and that's not a good thing because Roderick Green, the big left tackle, came out of his stance as 6'6 junior. Replay for special. He is part of a revamped offensive line, as we told you at the top. Normally, Oscar McAdory gets the start at the left tackle position, but Lee Hartman just felt like he needed to get a little more size, a little more bulk in that offensive line tonight going up against Grambling. Well, I'll tell you what, that, he, he's made some interesting moves coming into this ball game because you usually don't do that, you know, in the middle of the season like this. But, hey, you know, they're trying to make some things happen, trying to spark this ball club. Another bull rush. Was that intercepted? Oh, it was close. Joshua Kador, the 6'5 sophomore, almost came up with an interception right there off a screen play. And, man, Grambling had the bull rush on. Cato on this play right here. You watch him. He feels that it's going to be a screen. That's why he's sitting back. You can't see him. He comes into the oh. picture right there. He's waiting on that screen. He wants it. Had it, but dropped it. Boy, the big fellas don't get chances like that too often. Not at all, but he read that screen all the way, Barry. Second down and 15 now upcoming. Love Lady out of the shotgun. Only two seconds Hi. left. On the play clock, so Love Lady, there we see some of that experience that Coach Hardman was talking about. Recognized that he wasn't going to get the play off and quickly call timeout. Well, you know, talking to Coach Hardman, another guy, John Pierce, the backup quarterback, he's he's seen a lot of time this season for Arkansas Pine Bluff, and he's made some things happen. So a lot of people questioning who's going to be the quarterback, but Coach Hardman has a lot of confidence in Love Lady. Hey, make your plans October 31st. NBC Network, your Urban Family Channel, launches a new season of great programming the entire family can watch. Cecil Fielder and Nicole Watson talk with Sammy Sosa, Jackie Joyner episodes, and a host of other celebrities on the award-winning Sports Lifestyles. All you have to do is click on NBCNetwork.com for the entire new fall lineup. Sports Lifestyles premieres October 31st at 8 on NBC. Barry, Arkansas Pine Bluff is coming out right here, and they, they're lined up in trips right. I think they're going to come down here to the bottom. They got single coverage down here at the bottom. They got Octavius Bonds, who's one of Grambling's best best corners down here in, in single coverage. Well, Grambling showing blitz. They brought the house. The pass was complete to Cedric Bowen, but he was quickly brought down by Octavius Bond, and that brings us to the end of our first quarter from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Golden Lion Stadium is where the Arkansas Pine Bluff team hopes to knock off Grambling, but after the end of the first, it's Tigers 10, Golden Lions nothing. They'll get there by air. So can you. They'll get there by land. So can you. Either way you get there, the destination will be Birmingham, Alabama. Saturday, December 13th, the SWAT Championship returns to Birmingham, Alabama. The East and West champions will be there. Will you? No one told us to constantly research and develop new ways to generate cleaner electricity. Or maintain a 99.9% .9 reliability rate while at the same time keeping our prices 15% below the national average. We do it because we live here. Because we're customers too. It's nearly 100 years of providing safe, reliable, affordable power. Simply by trying every day to be the best we can be. That's why you can count. You can count. You can count. On Alabama Power.
It's tough not having a car. With immediate claim service, GEICO gets you back on the road fast. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. We are back in Pine Bluff with Sam Shade, Barry Milligan. Glad you are with us. Third down upcoming as Pine Bluff able to complete its last pass. But the bad news, it was for a loss of seven. Third down now. And very long for the Golden Lions with Lovelady once again in the shotgun as Grambling going to bring the pressure again. Pass is complete to midfield. First down, Golden Lions. Brian Thomas Miller, the sophomore, comes up with a huge play. And that's that one-on-one -on -one coverage. Grambling on the outside. Everybody's man-to-man. -man. You watch Lovelady right here. He's going to get pressure. Sits in the pocket, and he makes an excellent throw right here. Great catch going up high by the receiver and tucking that thing down, making the first down. Got inside of Octavius Bond for 27 yards. And you see that signal for a first down. <laughs> these guys are pumped up, I tell you. These large receivers, they can play also. We talk about Grambling. They've got some receivers that can make some plays in this game also. Hey, Sam, that kid is a 4-4-6 guy. You get him out in space, and he is trouble. The underneath receiver is open again, and trouble is Kerry Washington. Another sophomore, another first down, this time down to the Grambling 32. I think those I, I think those go, golden lines have woken up. You watch right here. You watch the middle of the field right here. You see where the linebackers vacate, and you see the receiver come underneath, and that thing is wide open. That's what they want to try to do. Grambling comes back and plays zone, and they beat them underneath. When they play man, they go up top like they did on the last play. They went up top to Thomas Miller. And these, this, this game right here, this is getting pretty interesting. It's a chess match because Gremlin, they want to play man-to-man -man coverage, and if they do that, the ball is going to go up top. And then they come back with zone, and they go underneath. So it's definitely a chess match. They mark him down at the 35. That's where Degree was able to drag him down. Love Lady this time on a timing pattern downfield. That is caught. Caught at the five-yard line. Kerry Washington, first and goal for the Golden Lions. Mr. Washington, two catches in a row right there. And Gremlin, they sent a corner blitz on this play. They sent the corner. From, you see the corner number 11 coming to the plate? And that's why the safety is is one-on-one -on -one with with Corey Washington, and that's not a good matchup. Whenever you have your safety number 26 for Gramlin, you've got uh, Richard Dodgers out there playing one-on-one -on -one coverage. He, he's not going to win those battles, not against these receivers. These receivers are too good. You've got to leave your corner out there. You can't bliss them off the corner like that. 31 yards on the completion. Degree has been nursing a bad hamstring, and it looked like it there as Billy Moody gets the handoff and runs it right up the gut. He'll pick up a couple. Barry, I, I'm really not understanding what Gremlin is trying to do defensively. You know, they're sending blisses, and I don't feel like they have to really bliss this guy. They, they don't have to send their corners. They're, they're doing a good job of blissing the linebackers, and they try to corner bliss right there, and it hurt them. Moody picked up 122 yards in the Southern game. He is the banger in there as the backs this time in the eye on second down and goal. Lovelady going to try to take it himself, and he bangs up the middle again, but Jimmy Zachary fought through from his tackle position for Grambling and stopped him for a very, very short gain, if he gained anything at all. Well, Barry, this is where some of that extra size that Arkansas Pine Bluff has placed on that offensive line this week is going to help out, and we'll see right here if it pays dividends, if they can get this ball in the end zone, because they want to run the football. They've got three deep at the running back position, and Moody, he is the banger back there for, these, for this Arkansas Pine Bluff team. Arkansas Pine Bluff, one of the worst teams in the SWAC at converting in the red zone just 11 of 21 on the season they bang it in touchdown and now they come with james johnson james so, johnson so barry they can go four deep at the running back position and johnson he's a converted defensive back so they've got some talent on this Arkansas Pine Bluff team when you can put a defensive back in at running back and he scores a touchdown. You're talking about depth. 215 pounds, sophomore from Gary, Indiana, puts Pine Bluff on the board. Michael Sellers with the point after. It is good. We have got a great one coming up as Pine Bluff drives it right down the field and scores on Grambling. 12 minutes to go, and this is a good one from Pine Bluff.
Arkansas Pine Bluff answers back and trails Grambling just 10-7 after the nine play 77 yard scoring drive capped off by the two yard Johnson touchdown run. That is Henry Talbert receiving the kickoff to the 25-30. He's across the 35 out to the 40 before he is finally dragged down by Jeremy Matthews. And once again, Grambling will have excellent field position, but there is a flag down. Bear, I tell you, it looks like they had, they're going to have great field position because this, this is going to be against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Another personal foul is going to be called against the Golden Lions. Bear, I don't care how excited you are coming into a ball game. You can't make selfish plays like that. After the play was over, personal foul on Pine Bluff. 15-yard pill. Mm. Barry, like I said before, you've got to control yourself. In a ball game like this, you're in this ball game. It's 10-7, and right here you're giving up field position right here. That's what happens. And Coach Harbin, I know he's upset because he talked about that coming into this ball game. He talked about the penalties, and he talked about the mistakes, and that's what that is. Lee Hardman, a Pine Bluff alum, 1972, played defensive back here, trying to get this team back on the SWAC map. Bruce Eugene trying to get Grambling back in the end zone. That pass downfield, and that is complete to Tim Abney at the 34-yard line. Barry, I'm just so impressed with this kid. You're watching back here, in the pocket, moving around. Eugene, a big guy, buying his receivers time to make plays, make catches. He, I can't say enough about this kid, Eugene. He's got a great arm, but he also does a lot of great things to help his receivers get open. Tim Abney, a freshman from Monroe with his 22nd catch of the year. First down at the 34. Handoff inside, and there is plenty of running room for Talbert as he gets it down to the 29-yard line. That is 15 yards and another first down for the Tigers. And Tobit, he's also the kick returner, had that big kick return to put up to give him this field position. And Tobit, he's exciting. He's a lot like Bowen. You know, he can do a lot of things with the ball, and he's going to make some things happen in that backfield. He was the first 100-yard rusher of the season as Grambling knocked off Prairie View. Had 105 yards with, oh, by the way, six carries. <laughs> out, of, average. out of the shotgun, he's looking for Douglas. Double covered, that is good coverage downfield by Pine Bluff as that pass was knocked away at the goal line. Terrell Hammonds down there in coverage along with Tyrone Walker. And you watch right here, he's working on Tyrone Walker. Walker actually is a safety, he's a safety, he plays a lot of safety, but playing against Gramlin, you've got to have guys that can play man coverage, and he can do that from the safety position. And Walker with 11 passes defense, that is number two in the SWAC. This is a very talented secondary here for Lee Hardman's Pine Bluff Golden Lions. Well, when you have a coach, a head coach that played defensive back, you got to be good <laughs> in that secondary. Exactly. Second and 10. Again, Eugene out of the shotgun. Looking downfield, pressured, overthrown. Oh, and should have been intercepted. Oh, my. It bounced right off Terrell Hammond's chest. Terrell Hammond sitting back there playing center field. He should have had that interception, Baron. He's he's upset about it. But I'll tell you, watch the strength of Eugene right here. You watch one of the Pine Bluff guys come through. He has a chance. Oh, he doesn't phase Eugene. Eugene makes that throw. He just sits in uh, there. We're talking about strength. And that ball was overthrown. And what? watch him again. And that might have been one of the reasons. You know, he gets he gets kind of grabbed a little bit right there, thrown off a little bit. Usually he's on target, but you know, they got after him a little bit, and that, that caused him to rush that throw. Third and ten now. They come with the screen inside. What defense. Oh, they had Moses Harris read beautifully on that play. Johnny Randall with another tackle. On that play right there, you're talking about making adjustments. Big time adjustments. They come back. Grambling early on in the ball game, they completed that play twice. They throw this pass twice. Right here, you got a golden line all over him waiting on that play. Excellent. That's Tyrone Walker again coming up from his safety spot. And Walker's having a big time game for this Arkansas Pine Bluff team. He makes a play down the field, comes back, makes a big tackle. And Grambling right here, this is going to be a long field goal. This is, four, this is a 45 yarder. 45 yarder water. coming up, and that is partially blocked. And that will be picked up. And if they're going the other way with it, Grambling relaxed. And that's going to be McLemore right there. Courtney, Courtney McLemore coming off of that right side. 
and with a big time block and we talk about special teams coming into this game and we have seen some big time plays in the special teams tonight. Zachary Barnett picked that ball up and returned it to the 26 yard line so special teams that have been haunting Pine Bluff in the past are really going their way tonight. And, and the timing is off right here because the snap is too high. It gives the guys from, from Arkansas Pine Bluff a chance to get there and make a play. You see right there, you see what you see uh, Walker come in there, make an excellent play. Special Aaron, teams is the key right here. Aaron Randall, the long snapper, too high with that one as Lovelady comes back on the That's first down three. play, and they will rule incomplete. And we'll say that that ball short hopped before Brian Thomas Miller was able to haul it in. It looks, it looks like they want to go at Mr. Bonds a little bit, and I'm kind of surprised because Octavius Bonds, he's one of the better corners on this Grambling team, so I'm very surprised to see them throwing his way tonight. So the incompletion brings up a second and ten. Lovelady once again will operate from the shotgun. That is Johnson in motion. They'll hand the ball off and get stuffed. Kenneth Petway comes up from his linebacker spot. John Petty in there as well. And, and that will be a loss of yardage. And Petway, he's not a starter for this Gremlin team. They can go too deep on this defensive ball club, especially at linebacker. They've got so much speed and talent right there. And Petway comes in and he sniffed that run out right off the bat. Excellent play by Petway. Loss of three on the play. Calvin Thomas comes out. Again, three wideouts in the set. Moody in the backfield, and Moody on the receiving end at the 30 35. Run out of bounds. Very near the 40 yard line, and that will be another first down for the Golden Lions. On that play right there, Barry Moody, does, he just does a great job of getting outside. You watch right here, you watch Lovelady. Lovelady, he's looking downfield. He wants to throw downfield, but he dumps it off to his back, and his back does a great job of getting upfield and getting that first down. Well, that's a beautiful play by Lovelady. He never even looked at Moody until he was ready to deliver the ball to him. And that shows his experience. He knows he knows where the receivers are going to be on this field. He knows where everybody's going to be, so he can do that. He can look downfield, and he can come back and make that throw to the receiver. First and 10, Pine Bluff from the 40. The quick out near side. And Delvis Johnson makes the grab. That is his seventh catch of the year for the six-foot senior. Rough in the pass. On the defense. Automatic first down. And for once, Pine Bluff gets the benefit of a big penalty as a roughing the passer call goes against the Tigers. And that will move Pine Bluff into Grambling territory. Well, I like this game plan. I like what Coach Harmon is doing right here. He's trying to keep Gramlin off balance. He's making throws down the field. He's making underneath throws. And then he'll come back every now and then, and he'll dump the ball off to the back in the flats. So Gramlin is going to have to play the entire field in that secondary. They're going to have to play deep. They're going to have to play the short, short routes. And they're going to have to run to the ball because they're going to be some people open. First down at the Grambling 40. Love lady will work from under center. The handoff and short yardage, if any yardage at all, for Billy Moody before he is wrapped up quickly. Calvin Arnold. Right there, just looks like uh, Arkansas pop, pops up. They're trying to keep Gramlin honest. You know, they've got to try to run the ball a little bit. Got to try to establish the run because if you don't, Gramlin's going to drop some guys back in coverage and they're going to double up on some of these receivers and you know, try to take the passing game away. And that's what Doug talked about. Doug talked about, you know, he had to stop the running game, and they're doing that, but now they've got to stop this passing game. David Hicks in there on the stop as well. Second down and 10. Lovelady under pressure. Going to be flushed out of the pocket, and he'll run, drop the ball, and was able to recover it and actually pick up a couple of yards on the play as once again Hicks was in hot pursuit. Also, Dimitri Carr, one of the other backup linebackers. You watch right here, Gramlin is getting after him. They've got a four-man rush causing all that pressure. So that's what I talk about. Gramlin, they don't have to blitz Arkansas Pine Bluff to, you know, get him to release the ball. They've got four guys up front that can get pressure, and they did that on that play. Third down and eight. Lovelady will operate from the shotgun. He has Calvin Thomas to his right side. Three wideouts in the formation and they did not get the playoff that will be a delay of game penalty against the lions on the offer replay third down 
both of these teams offensively do so much shifting and motion and moving around that you've got to get out of the huddle a little soon so that you can do all that stuff. You can't come out of the huddle with only eight seconds on the clock because you're not going to get that playoff because there's just too much shift and too much motion, you know, trying to get the defense off balance, trying to get those matchups, and that's what happens when you do that. Three wide outs again in the formation, but this time it's third and 13 after the five-yard penalty. Love Lady once again in the shotgun. Thomas to his left. Looking near side and the pass complete to Ronnie Hayes who battles down to the 33 yard line with Travis Massey dragging him down. And Ronnie Hayes, uh, you know, he's a kid that uh, talking to Coach Harmon. He's a guy they want to get the ball in his hands. You watch Love Lady right here. Doesn't, he has a lot of time on this play actually, uh, but he does have a guy in his face. Great throw and catch. And you see Hayes after the play trying to make something happen. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Pine Bluff, 11 of 19 this season on fourth down situations. Going to go for it from the Grambling 33-yard line. Love Lady out of the shotgun. Oh, that's going to be a flag all the way. Big time as Octavius Bond on the in route was all over Brian Thomas Miller. And you watch Buns on that play right there. They are going after Buns. He doesn't have any help out there. That's one thing about being on that island. They isolated Thomas Miller on the quick slant. You watch Buns right here. Back First thing, he gets on turned around. Yeah. And Buns has to grab him because if he doesn't, he's going to make that catch. So, hey, you know, you do that, and you line back up, and you live to play another day, Barry. So on the penalty, on the first, down first down for the Golden Lions with the ball at the 28-yard line. This is a good-looking drive right here for Pine Bluff, and time Grambling, out. a little unorganized on defense, has to take a quick timeout, and we will take it with him. 6.27 to go, and we have got a shocker in the swack. It's 10-7 Tigers from Pine Bluff. Tomorrow at 5, Southern Battles JSU. We told you, we're not just playing games. We're making history on NBC Sports. This is for all my players out there riding. Spill it. MBC salutes historically black colleges and universities. The name Grambling State University has been synonymous with excellence for 100 years. Excellence in academics, GSU offers 72 undergraduate and graduate programs taught by a distinguished faculty. Excellence in athletics, GSU's athletic teams routinely rank among the NCAA's best. And Grambling's world-famous marching band is simply excellent. So if I had to describe our legacy, it would be a legacy of excellence. Excellence in athletics, in academics, and in co-curricular activities. Tomorrow belongs to the youth of today. MBC salutes Grambling State for its role in securing our future. Well, Arkansas Pine Bluff has shown no fear of Grambling, and no one put that better than Cedric Bowen, one of the smallest guys on this Pine Bluff team. I'm just, I'm here to play, and I'm, I'm going to play like it's any other game. It's, Grambling's just a name. I ain't scared of it. Yeah, you play, play a Cedric Bowen already with a 61-yard return to his credit tonight. And Bowen is definitely playing on. He's had some big plays in this ball game tonight. First down, Pine Bluff at the Grambling 27. Love Lady under center. Rolling to the near side, wants to throw, flushed out of the pocket. That is incomplete. Looking downfield for Brian Jones, his number one receiver, but he was under big pressure from Dimitri Carr. <laughs> Dimitri Carr, he's a backup linebacker, and he comes in there, big time blitz. They've got so much speed at that linebacker position. Love that he doesn't have time to get rid of that, to get rid of that ball, and he gets rid of it. I mean, again, this is a stunner. 
because we told you it was a 54-15 game last year. I mean, Grambling jumped all over Pine Bluff in the first quarter and never looked back. I'll tell you, Barry, coming into this ball game, you know that had to be in the back of these players' minds for Arkansas Pine Bluff having Grambling come in here. They don't want to be embarrassed. They're at home. They're right on campus. Second and ten. Not anymore. Make it first and goal after the completions of Brian Thomas Miller. 19 yards, first and goal at the Tigers' eight. Love Lady looks. He looks great in the pocket. When he has time, this is what he can do when he has time right here. He can find that open receiver. Thomas Miller, excellent catch right there. Has the, has the cornerback hanging on him. He comes down with a catch right there for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Excellent grab, excellent route run by Brian Thomas Miller, who got inside of Travis Massey and hauled it in. And now we're going to have a substitution penalty that will go against Arkansas Pine Bluff. And the thing about that, Barry, right there they had 12 guys in the huddle when on that they play. broke the huddle, right? You, you can't do that because what you do, oh, no, if you do that, the, the defense goal. doesn't have a chance to realize what personnel you have on the field. And it's actually an advantage to the offense to be able to send a guy out late like that. So that's why they throw that flag because they don't want to give the offense that type of advantage. Well, and Doug Williams doesn't want Lee Hartman's club to have any more advantages right now because the Golden Lions are playing as inspired a football game as they've played all season long. But they come to the line with only five seconds showing on the play clock. First and goal from the 13-yard line. They get the playoff. It's Cedric Bowen to the far side of the field, battling at the 10. And he is finally corralled over there. Kenneth Petway ran him down. Barry, I just can't believe what I'm seeing right here. Getting to the line of scrimmage too late. They've got to get out of that huddle sooner. The coaches have to get those plays in a little bit faster from the sideline and get things going because right now they're taking a chance on, you know, having another penalty by letting too much time run off that clock. They picked up a couple of yards on the play, so it'll be goal to goal this time from the 11-yard line. Love Lady out of the shotgun, four wideouts in the formation. They isolate Bowen. One on one with a linebacker, but Love Lady just couldn't get it to him. Marcus Yanez had the task of covering Cedric Bowen one on one. You talk about an excellent call right there. That was the call they needed. You get Bowen matched up on a linebacker, and he's just got too much speed and quickness. The linebacker can't stay with him, but Love Lady just doesn't have enough time to get that pass off, and that would have been a touchdown, Barry. I mean, that was. Timeout, pine block. That was a touchdown all the way. But Love Lady doesn't have time right there. So you get this kid some more time, and he's going to make some things happen. So I, I think this is a good situation here. We'll get back to that momentarily. But first, we invite you to celebrate the culture, the pride, and the tradition of America's historically black colleges and universities with NBC Network. October 28th, NBC premieres the new series, On the Yard. You'll get a glimpse of the black college experience. It's On the Yard. And it's on NBC, premiering October 28th at 10 p.m. Sam, I think this is a great call here by Lee Hardman to take time out, regroup a little bit. Things have been a little unorganized. You still have goal to go from the 11-yard line, but you don't want to make any mistakes this deep in Grambling territory. Not right here because, you know, no matter what happens on this play, whether, whether you get the first down or the touchdown, you're still in field goal range, so you don't want any penalties right here. But it's going to be interesting to see if Gramlin is going to get out to Love Lady because every time he has time tonight, he's completed throws for big plays. So it's going to be interesting to see if they're going to come after. And it looks like they are. I think we're going to see pressure. We see, see the receiver coming across his man-to-man -man coverage. He's got Calvin Thomas in motion, and he is under big-time pressure, floating one to the end zone. That ball was not catchable out of the reach of Brian Jones as, once again, Grambling brought the house. They brought everybody on that play right there. They brought seven guys, and Arkansas Pine Bluff sent four guys out. You see the pressure coming off the end right there. Number 85 fusses him out of the pocket right here. He has to pull this thing up and get rid of it. So that will bring up a field goal situation for Michael Sellers, who is a freshman. From Birmingham, Alabama, sure Michael is. Sellers, I tell you. He's a two-time All-Stater, but he has really struggled. Just five out of ten this year. And he has struggled from this range as well. But that is up, and it is good. Sellers with a big-time kick right there, tying this ball game up. We are tied on Michael Sellers' sixth field goal of the year. 439 to go in the half, and it's 10-all. 
May I have the ring? Navigator. There are those who travel and those who travel well. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate. Quite possibly the best home fitness machine ever made. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. Own the new Bowflex Ultimate with no money down and monthly payments lower than many health club dues. Call and ask for a free video or DVD or visit us on the web today. The new Bowflex for ultimate results. I joined the Navy because I had a plan. I wanted to work for myself. The Navy taught me the discipline I needed to achieve that goal. It gave me the strength, body, and mind. And the knowledge to get ahead. It was the building block my success. Today, I own my own business. The Navy gave me more than just a strong foundation. It gave me the courage I needed to find the person in me. Navy, accelerate your life. What a game we've got from Pine Bluff, Arkansas with Sam Shea, Barry Milligan here with you. This team in Lee Hartman's 11 years has been one of the top teams in 1AA in terms of attendance. And the fans tonight are really getting treated. And that is one huge reason why. Look what this team has done in the second quarter. Wow. In the first five games, only 10 points allowed by Gramlin tonight. They give up 10 early on. I tell you, this is, this is an exciting game, Barry. Line drive kickoff fielded at the five yard line by Octavius Bond and he is wrapped up at the 23 drives ahead to the 25 yard line before he's finally taken down Brad Dixon in there helping out on the stop and we will see with four minutes 31 seconds to go if Grambling can answer. Tell you, Barry, things are not working out the way Grambling felt like they would coming into this ball game. Arkansas Pine Bluff playing a phenomenal game tonight. Offense, defense, special teams, everybody making plays. Well, and they knew that. You know, assistant coach Melvin Spears, we were talking to him at the team hotel. He says, look, every team in the SWAC gets up for us. It's their game of the year, and Pine Bluff is playing just that way. With Eugene out of the shotgun, looking downfield, that is caught. And that is a battle going on right in front of the Grambling sideline. Chris Day coming up with the catch, and he gets all the way out. Eugene does a great job right here. You see the linebackers drop back in zone coverage right here, and you see Eugene make this throw, and he finds the open area. That's what he does so well against zone defense. He can find guys in the open spaces and get the ball to him. He can, he can throw the ball all over the place, Barry. This kid can make any throw. 17 yards on the completion, first and 10. He's under pressure, gets it away. That is complete. You just have to wonder sometimes how he gets it away. Tremone Douglas with another grab. I tell you what he has, Barry. He has pocket presence. He has the presence of mind. He's got a defender. He can brush a guy off and move to the side and make a throw. You watch him right here. He's in the pocket. You see the blitz by the two linebackers. He's got a free guy, and that's what I mean, pocket presence, the presence to step to the side and step up and make a throw. I mean, we talked about it. This is a big kid. He's about 260, but he has great feet, quick feet, and the ability to elude. Barry, 12 for 18. If he's 260, Barry, I'm 200. <laughs> Downfield and complete as Chris Day walks the tightrope on the far side of the field. That will be another Grambling first down. 
And that's Chris Day right there making a big play. Chris Day, he's a transfer, transfer there from Troy State, and he's a guy that Doug is very high on. All these receivers for Gramlin. You come to Gramlin, Doug says, as a receiver, if you can play, you're going to get some balls. We're going to throw the ball to you. Oh, wait, what are you saying? You're not 200? <laughs> 13 yards on that completion. Chris Day had a two touchdown game against Prairie View. Five catches, 104 yards in that big grambling win. First and 10 from the Pine Bluff 43. They go on the interior screen to Adrian Caesar, and he battles his way down to very near another first down. I believe he'll be about a yard shy at the 34. Barry, I really like that play they just ran right there. That's a play that's becoming a big time play in college football, professional football. Getting the ball out quick to your receivers because nowadays the receivers in the, in the, in the college game are so good after the catch that you want to get that ball to them early. Out of the shotgun on second and one. Eugene wants it all into the end zone and overthrown Chris Day was on single coverage, but that pass just out of his reach. Keith Scott doing an excellent job out there on the corner. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage against Day, and he was step for step. They might have had a little step right here. You watch Eugene back here in the pocket. He's got some pressure, sits in there. Pretty good throw right there, but Day just doesn't have enough to get under it. And Michael Willis coming on the linebacker blitz, and I tell you, you you're rolling the dice when you blitz this guy. Well, you've you got to, Barry, because you've got to get some pressure. And talking to Coach Hardman, Hardman talked about getting pressure, and I think they have to blitz him to get pressure. There's a handoff inside to Henry Talbert. Grambling trying to get the first down, and they do, but not by much. As If you recognize that face, well, you all know one of the all-time greats, the gentleman in the maroon shirt, L.C. Greenwood, a former... Golden Lion here at Arkansas Pine Bluff, and we will visit with him. Part of our big halftime show coming up, we'll have the Battle of the Bands. LC will be the recipient of an award here, and we will have our Geico first half stats as well. Big halftime coming up from Pine Bluff. LC Greenwood, remember that steel curtain defense. Oh, baby. Four Super Bowl rings. As Eugene going for the brass ring there, over through Tim Abney at the goal line. And Arkansas Pine Bluff on that play. They got after him. You, you watch right here. He gets held a little bit right there, but you can't see it. The referees missed that one right there. Well, Tyrone Walker, one of the best DBs in the SWAC, is Abney wanted to change jerseys and put on the striped one for a while and throw the flag. Did not get the call, so that'll bring up second and 10 from the 33. And Walker's having a big night for Arkansas Pine Bluff. There we go, Eugene now once again going for it all. Into the back of the end zone and again overthrown and out of the reach of Moses Harris. It looks like uh, looks like Gramlin feels like they can run by these defensive backs for Arkansas Pine Bluff. But these Arkansas Pine Bluff defensive backs are running step for step with these receivers for Gramlin. So they're showing some speed and I don't know, I, I don't know which fam they looked at. And you see Bruce Eugene right here, he needs three completions to pass Doug Williams on the school's all-time list. Well, he will rewrite all of Doug's records before his time is done. Just a junior. Everybody in the SWAC is going to have to see this guy for another year. Third down and 10 from the 33. As Grambling continues to try and go over the top, the blitz is on. Eugene throws it out of bounds, and he was under huge pressure from Haywood Small. You see the speed that Haywood Small showed on that play right there, getting after Eugene. And Eugene was also impressive. You watch his feet. Man, this, this, this kid can move around. For, for a guy 260, Barry, he does an excellent job of getting, getting away from the rush. You watch him right here, and you see Small. Small, Small has a chance Time right out. there, but Eugene Time gets up. away from him. Now with 2.07 to play, Pine Bluff going to take a timeout as that defensive unit has made a big stand again, and the crowd on its feet in appreciation of that. Sammy surprised at all that for three straight plays, Grambling tried to go over the top with plenty of time left in the half. Well, Barry, I, I feel like these guys, I feel like Grambling saw something on the field, film coming into this ball game. But the thing about it is, as a team, I feel like Arkansas Pine Bluff has done a great job of scouting themselves, realizing where they made, made mistakes. And they've come out tonight and corrected a lot of mistakes they've made. I want to take a moment to recognize our student athletes of the game. Tyrone Walker, a 3.3 GPA in computer science. 
Totally. For Arkansas Pine Bluff, in addition to being tied for the SWAC lead with five interceptions this year, that guy's doing the job on the field and in the classroom. Well, I'll tell you what, Barry, as a former defensive back, you've got to have some smarts to play back there in that secondary. Mr. Walker, he definitely has them. Fourth down. Bruce Eugene under pressure again. The pass is complete to Gershon Jesse over the middle. He's at the 10 and down to the 5. They isolate the tight end over the middle. Dick Gershon Jesse, the 6'5 senior, making his eighth catch of the year. And, and it is a huge one. And Gershon Jesse, you watch right here, the tight end. And Doug really pulls one out of his hat right here. You're talking about an excellent call. The tight end had a, hadn't had a catch all night. And Gershon Jesse, he was an All-America candidate coming into this yes, season. He was. But you've got so many great receivers out there that he doesn't get a lot of balls, but an excellent player for this Grambling team. He was first team all swack last year. And we're going to get a penalty now. Illegal substitution on the defense. 12 players. So once again, a little bit of confusion in the Pine Bluff huddle as they break the huddle with 12 players. Big play again for the big fella. And this is a backbreaker right here. This is tough. This, you got fourth and long right here. And look at Jesse on this play. He looks like a receiver the way he's running that ball after the catch. Barry, I tell you, if Arkansas Pine Bluff, if they had held right there, that would have been big going into the half. Mm -hmm. But right here, they've got to keep Grambling out of the end zone, make Grambling settle for a field goal. I think that's going to be big right here. First and goal. Eugene looking to throw. He's under pressure again. Flushed out of the pocket. Let's it go and throws it out of the back of the end zone. Big pressure being applied that time by number 52, Travis DeVoe. 